Pairing with us a poem that follows hyphenated identity and longing through half-formed relationships and rejections. Situationships are truly not real relationships, but often leave a haunting memory of what could have been. Hyphenated identity constantly asks the individual what could have or should have been. Please welcome Ria. You say, Ria, your heart's going to keep getting broken. You keep choosing these people that, you know, aren't from the homeland. And I say, oh, you mean like the guy at my, that danced at my cousin's wedding? Because it's easier to say that than, how can I look at anyone with love when all I see is me? When all I see are soft bodies, untamable body hair, everything that is too much and not enough in the same line. Because it is easier to say, oh, I'm just not into him. It's, it's nothing. Don't worry. Because it is easier to lie than to face the reality that it's not enough. How can I look at anyone in love when I only see the person who can't speak Hindi, Sindhi, anything? The person who chose melting pot over masala? The person that dreads every trip back to India? That dreads getting asked the question, when are you going to learn Sindhi? When are you going to learn Hindi? The questions pile up. How can I look at anyone with love? And to this, I always hear the same advice. You know, maybe they'll understand you better. Words like diaspora, ABCD, hyphenated, it'll mean something to them. And when I get to the truth of it, I don't want them to understand better. Because then they'll know the real fear that I'm scared that I don't always feel like India is a second home. That the family I see every year or every five years or the last trip every 10 years forgot about me a little more. That I see a new cousin that I haven't seen in so long. That I've heard about a relative that died that I can't remember. How can I look at anyone with love if I keep forgetting? Sometimes I have to remember that my grandmother had to leave one land for another because a border was set up. Sometimes I have to remember that all my grandparents had to make this move, this transition from one half to another, because these tears hurt, these tears split, but they found a way to make it work. Sometimes I have to remember that if falling in love and finding somebody to love me, this confused, lost person is so hard, then finding myself is probably even harder. I'm going to keep searching, shifting, and transforming, much like these identities keep doing, much like these relationships keep doing. Because if it's not enough to not know, then what is enough is to know to keep searching. So, a little known fact, tomorrow's my dad's birthday. He isn't here right now because I'm from California. <laughs> do this thing I wrote for him. Hey Dad, I know you feel really sad when you think about how people feel when they think about their dads, that people feel bad or mad. But Dad, you always make me feel glad. So much so I turn into this little child that feels like I need to string rhymes together to explain to you this is how I feel. Because I know, Dad, men are taught not to cry. Men are taught that their only emotions are anger, and to validate such anger only leads to this remorseful bitterness. And Dad, I know you might scream and shout, but I've seen you cry too. I've seen you cry at Bollywood movies when the father slaps his daughter, and you sh cringe, thinking, how could anyone do that? Dad, I've seen you cry holding cigarettes in your hand, hoping the smoke will lift your spirits while the ash burns away anything that was bothering you. But Dad, I've never heard you speak about it. Dad, I've seen you cry, but Dad, I want to hear. You've been taught to shoulder the burden of this family. Maybe that's why arthritis started at your ankles, because it's a heavy weight to carry. To carry two daughters who fled different sides of the country for education, to carry a wife who's not sure whether her heart lies in India or California, but Dad, you go through a box every week every time you say you're going to quit smoking. And what I want to say is, Dad, it's OK. It's OK. You can, use those, you can use that mouth to talk. It doesn't 
need for to be held for cigarettes every time. Dad, it's okay to let me see you cry more. Because, Dad, you're enough. Everything about you is enough. You've cradled and raised daughters who've learned to speak and think for themselves. You've never put a burden of worry on our shoulders or backs. So, Dad, please know that you are more than enough. Thank you, guys.